Welcome to the Hyper Growth Zone podcast. This is your go-to resource for personal growth, mastering communication, and influencing and persuasion techniques that will help you unleash the full potential of yourself and others. Here is your host, Alex Morgan. All right, welcome everyone to another episode of the Hyper Growth Zone podcast. My name is Alex Morgan, and I'm a master trainer of hypnosis and NLP. And for this episode, I have another special guest. We have Gary with us, and he's had a extensive career in management consulting for over 23 years, and he's lived around the world in interesting places such as China and even Australia. And Gary also is now in his encore career as an executive coach. So welcome, Gary. Thanks for coming on the show. Alex, thank you so much for inviting me and having me on. I always like being on this side of the microphone. Yeah, we were just uh, actually chatting a bit about that, how you said you feel uh, calmer on this side of the microphone. So for everyone that's listening, I was actually on uh, Gary's podcast as well. So we're kind of trading here and see seeing how it goes. Um, so I did want to dive in a little bit. Um, I was on your website and you mentioned on there that through everything you've kind of been through, uh, you wish you had a coach for yourself. So can you tell us like what that kind of means to you uh, after your journey, now you're in your encore career and everything. So how that would have fit into what you've done throughout your career here? Yeah. And thanks. Thanks for that question. When I reflect back and understood where I came from in my background, I was a very much roll up my sleeves, get stuff done, ask very few questions with little time for self-reflection or increased self-awareness on certain things. And when I dive into coaching and the more I learn about it, it would have been exponentially helpful for me throughout my career to have pauses in my day or my month to talk to somebody who's doing nothing but asking me questions about where I'm at, what I want to do, how I want to progress. I know I wrote that comment when I went to China. And reflecting on that because I'm a roll on my sleeves, get stuff done type of person, I was saying yes to everything. I arrived in China in January 2013. And for the first two years, I was just saying yes to everything, attending everything with no real stop, no real pause, nobody questioning, are you sure you should be doing this? Are you sure you should be doing that? So I think at that point, once I realized what coaching involves, I, I reflect back into 2013 and say, boy, I would love to have talked to somebody about what I was doing specifically when I just started in management consulting with KPMG in China. All right. Thanks so much. That's, I think you mentioned a, a couple of things. One of them is kind of questioning what you're doing and being asked questions so you can kind of find the right answer within yourself. So when you're coaching uh, executives now, is asking questions a big part of what you're doing and how do you find that weave that into the overall big picture of helping people? I would describe my coaching as doing nothing but asking hopefully great questions where a normal session is my client is talking 85, 90% of the time and I'm listening and focusing on the next question that might unlock something in them, which is 10 or 15% of the time where I might be talking. But the areas where I work with most folks, career transition is big. And what I'm finding people get promoted into certain areas and I'm not sure they're equipped to handle managing people now instead of just being managed. So if I think about where I focus up my attention on people, it's normally normally an inflection point within them where they're not happy, or they could be doing better, or they want to try something different, or they want that promotion. So it's hopefully embedded inside of them and something that they want to improve upon. The, the analogy I, I, I try to use is it's a Google map. You are here. And I try to get that point. It's like, where do you want to be? And let's talk about where you want to be. Well, I want to be a better leader. I want to be a better listener. I want to present better. I want to have more presence in a meeting. I want to be able to walk into a room or a situation and be less nervous and be more confident in what I'm doing. So once we have that visual of who they want to be, we'll say, okay, how do you see yourself now? Well, I see myself as all these things that aren't up to where I want to be. And then we'll just talk through, okay, you have that vision of the perfect person you want to be. Let's figure out some behaviors that you can start doing to help you to reach where you're at. Or where you want to go. Okay, awesome. I like the the visual of the Google map because a lot of times, let's say when we're working with someone and they're 
setting goals, they need to be specific to actually know like how are they going to get somewhere on the map? Because if you just go out and you're driving your car around and around and you don't have a destination to where you actually want to get, how will you know to actually get there? So let's say one of your client has some big ambitious goals, they're transitioning in their career, whatever problem they're working on, how specific do you get with them to, you know, lay out the steps and things like that to get them to where they want to go? I, I try to meet them where they're at and be the best that I can be with whatever experiments they want to run. A big part of my practice is, okay, you you want to be a better listener and a better communicator. What experiments do you think you can start running between now and our next call that you can just practice? You can try it on. You don't have to marry it. You can just you know, date it for a little bit. And the client might say, you know what? I talk too much in meetings. I'm always putting my voice in the room. So maybe this time I'm just going to listen in meetings and I'm not going to say anything and see how that sits with me. Or I'm just going to ask questions in meetings. I've worked with a lot of leaders that can be very prescriptive in what they want to do. Here, team, here's what I want you to do. Bing, 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 bing. And they cut straight to it. I said, well, if you feel like you're being too prescriptive and maybe not being the best leader, you could be your best manager. Maybe you should try asking your team questions. And you might say, get their permission ahead of time to say, hey, team, I'm just going to ask a lot of questions today. I'm not going to be as prescriptive as you normally see me to get their buy-in. And then you let them tell you what they can do. It's like, huh? So you're struggling with that. What haven't you tried? What solutions do you think you can start working on? And if we go down that path, that's a little bit of coaching inside of you being a manager or a leader inside of your organization. So I'm sensing and I'm feeling a lot of companies are incorporating coaching techniques into their practice or into their, sorry, not their practice, but into their um, job to get the most out of their team, to ask better questions of their folks instead of always coming in with the answer and directing their team where they, where they think they should go. All right. Awesome. Thanks so much for that. So you kind of talked about different things a leader can do or what they should do based on, you know, what their strengths and weaknesses are. Just kind of generally speaking th over the people you've worked with, what are some really good qualities that these leaders have that you tend to see and go like, oh, if they have this, I know that they're really going to be able to manage people and be successful in what they want to do. Are there some ones that stand out to you? Ironically, yes. Ironically, the more simplistic the solution is, the better. And the one thing I would say for any great leader, and in our lives, in our careers, we may have seen great leaders. And in my view, the great leader is the one that really listens, that will go into a meeting and listen and ask really good questions. I've always said the further I went up in my career uh, to eventually become partner at a big four, I didn't have to have all the answers. I had to have the best questions, which means I need to really listen to what's going on. I need to understand the problem and I need to empower other people through a question to let them tell me a direction that they want to go and maybe, you know, have some healthy tension in conversations. But when I reflect on my career and dealt with really high quality clients, those that were in the meeting and asked questions and were very thoughtful to what we were doing were just the best versus the domineering people that come in a room, they want to tell you how smart they are, they want to tell you what they know, and they just start taking over. So I'd say the traits in any profession, I don't care what it is, is, and I'll give you a quick story after this, is to listen and ask really good questions. And the story, I was, you can't see this, but I was like this close, and I've got my thumb and index finger really close to each other. I went in to see a new doctor, and a medical doctor, and I'm in there and he's asking me questions, and he keeps cutting me off. I'll start talking and he starts, oh, well, this is this and this is that. And I, I let myself get cut off and I didn't, I didn't dominate. And I thought to myself, I should have, I didn't because he was leaving. I should have said, doctor, do you mind if I give you a little piece of advice? And I don't know how he would take it. And I'm asking for permission. But even if he said yes, he may still get all pissed off with me. I would say, you need to do a better job at just listening and not cutting off your patients and doing something as simple as saying, what else do you want me to know about you? Because this is the first time I met him. And I bring up an issue and he's telling me, oh, well, you have gout or you have asthma and yada, 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 yada. And I think if he would have spent more time asking me questions for 15 or 20 minutes, instead of promoting what he knew, exponentially better. So I don't care if you're a doctor or in business, asking questions and really authentically listening to who you're talking to is brilliant. Yeah, and I think just to add to that, when you show people that you're willing to listen and ask questions, uh, people like to talk about themselves naturally. So they're going to like it. Plus, that's going to build a deeper rapport than someone like the doctor who you just mentioned. So if you can be a leader and everyone trusts you and you have rapport with everyone, then whatever questions you ask, you're going to 
get more answers. People are going to be more willing to speak and tell you uh, what they think. So you gave some advice to the doctor here uh, in your story. For any leaders out there that are listening, besides kind of asking questions and these things, would you have any other really key advice that you've seen come up over the years that you've given to someone or people, you know, find really helpful for them? One of the mantras that I carry with me is life is a pull and not a push. And you talked about it just now. You said trust, building up a good rapport, communication. And like I said earlier with my career, I roll up my sleeves and I get stuff done. What I've noticed in my career is people pulled me up because I kept my head down and did a really great job at what I was doing. So it's building connections and relationships with those you know, peers to you, um, your bosses that you're working with, to uh, go out of your way to make life easy for them, to think for them. I think the best, I was in consulting for several years, I tried to think for my boss. I tried to think on the next level for them. And when you start doing that for your boss or somebody, they love it because they know you're on their side. You want to make them look good. Uh, you're looking out for the best outcomes for either the project or your clients or your boss. And in what is life? What is the world? It's about building connections. And that's essentially what you want to do in your career is build up really good connections with people. And I've always been a massive advocate about finding mentors or getting people that can help you out. And coaching falls into that is, yes, a mentor is somebody that's going to give you a perspective on where you should go with your career. A coach is going to be trying to understand where you think you want to go with your career, where you think your de deficiencies are. That's why I love coaching so much is a mentor can tell you what they think, but a good coach can get out of you and, and help you articulate what you think about you, your career, and where you need to improve. Yeah, I think that's a really good point because a lot of the times, um, just from my perspective as well, when we're working with a client, many people, they probably already have inside of themselves some idea where they want to go, but something might be, let's say, blocking them a bit from truly realizing like, this is where I want to go. So do you find, with that being said, like any blocks, do you find any common, let's say, things limiting leaders that holds them back from getting to the next level, any like limiting beliefs or obstacles or blocks from really getting what they want? Well, I think you just touched on it. And I like to talk to people about what limiting beliefs they have about a certain thing. Well, their limiting belief, well, a leader should be bombastic and they should be the one that puts their voice in the room and they should be the one because that's how they're modeling and that's what they've seen. They may have a limiting belief that saying you don't know or I don't know is a sign of weakness. And you can never, ever do that when we could talk about that and think saying, I don't know, is a sign of strength in some forums, right? With psychological safety and vulnerability. So it's it's trying to understand inside of them what is blocking them and that going back to that analogy on Google Maps, you are here, you want to go there. What's blocking you? What's getting in the way? What are you telling yourself? And with everybody, it'll be different. But I think a good coach is somebody that understands what have you been telling yourself your whole life or your whole career that now doesn't serve you anymore. It's like, well, let's let's sit on that for a second. You think that you always need to put your voice in the room to be a great leader. Let's talk about it. Does that still stay true to you? Do you still believe it? And that's where you might run an experiment to say, don't talk in meetings. And they might come back two, three, four weeks later and say, you know, I didn't talk in meetings. I was so much more grounded. I was so much more present. I understood things. My mind wasn't trying to think of what to say next. It was thinking about what a great solution would be. And then we would go back and say, so now let's go back to your limiting belief and let's reassess that. It's like, you know what, Gary, I think I can get rid of it. I think it's not serving me anymore. And it may have served you really well to a certain point, which is why you latch onto it, because that's how you got famous. Like me, I've said a couple of times, I roll my sleeves and I get things done. At some point, that didn't serve me well because I stopped asking questions and getting clarity on the focus and reality of what I was being asked to do. So at some point, I should have let go of that limiting belief and started to be more inquisitive and ask better questions to get aligned on what my bosses wanted from me. Yeah, that's a really uh, good point that you made about these beliefs have been with us um, for a long time, too. So that's the great thing about coaching, generally, is you can get rid of literally decades of limiting beliefs just by someone asking you the right questions or coaching you and doing those experiments. So you mentioned in that last answer, one of the words that I like kind of zoned in on was experiments. So obviously, this sounds like you know, you're talking with your client during the session, and then afterwards you want them to experiment or practice uh, doing something. So are you always giving them something to experiment on or be curious about? How does that kind of work with your uh, clients? How much 
you know, do you see if they experiment a lot, they get better results? How do you kind of see that? This is where I'm evolving my practice. I had a podcast guest and I have a, a podcast called Coffee House Coaching where I talk to other executive coaching coaches. And one of the guests said, I always have a key pillar of my practice is to always have them do an experiment. And the reason I'm doing that podcast is to listen to other executive coaches to see what is my style. And the more I listen, the more I like it. I do three things at the end of my coaching sessions. One is, what are you taking away from this session? What, what stood out for you? The second thing is, what do you want to experiment with between now and next? And where I'm, I'm struggling is how, if they say, oh, I'm, I'm good, I really can't think of anything, at what point do I push a little bit more? Or at what point do I say, hey, here's what we've talked about. Maybe you should practice this. What do you think? And get them to, to acquiesce and say, oh, yeah, that's a good idea. I forgot about that. Let me do that. So I'm teetering on whether it's mandatory is a tough word in coaching, but I'm considering always coming through with two or three different things that they can try between now and next because it'll give them something to do and something to learn in the next session they can come back and hey gary i tried those experiments okay let's talk about what what you experienced from that so i'm gravitating towards that the third thing i always ask is what what more do you need from me as a coach so do you need more time do you need more space do you need more articles do you need what do you need from me do you need more accountability uh coaching could be a massive accountability factor and, you know, they may be looking for that from me. So the three things are, what are your takeaways? What are you going to do between now and next? And what more do you need from me? So the the last one's really interesting to me. What, what do they need from me? Because that's a way for us to obviously, as coaches, to get feedback. So what are you noticing since you're, you've been implementing this lately? What are people saying about this? I'm curious myself. I love the takeaways. They always have takeaways. And most of us are like, oh, so many, or hopefully so many, not that I'm you know, a God's gift to coaching, but there's oh, so many things I want to do. The now to next, that's a tougher, the, what, do, what more do you need from me? Very rarely do they do that. Cause I, I, I feel it's a bit confrontational that in a point, what I'm trying to do is create a safer space where they can say something, where they do notice something in me that I'm doing that I'm not noticing that's upsetting them or that they really like. Uh, the feedback could be, Hey, I really like when you send me articles between our sessions. I like when you send me a quick text and say, Hey, how did that meeting go? As we talked about, that may be something there's definitely the coaching session and then outside of coaching. And that's where coaching might be able to take hold a bit more is during the one hour session, you're going through things, but in between those two, three, four weeks in between sessions, that may be where some of the words that I spoke really resonated. And I've had more clients than not lately come back and say, Hey, when you said this to me in our last session, that really stuck with me. Um, one client in particular, I said, well, maybe that's, maybe you're not shooting for a promotion right now. Maybe you're just kind of doing a great thing and saying, you know what? I'm comfortable in my position. I don't want to go for the next thing right now. And he, he came back and said, that's not me. I, I'm not, I'm not a person that, that floats. And maybe that's a limiting belief and saying, Hey, let's question. But he's like, no, I need to keep progressing because he's a, a strong young man and in professional services. And that comment had him reflect on who he was to say, that's not me to just coast, quote unquote coast, not as a bad thing, but just, you know, you're not looking to move up in your career. And that told him, no, I need to keep going forward. And little did I know, you know, throughout that, when he came back and said, I was like, oh, that was impactful. But in the moment when I'm coaching, I have zero idea what's going to be impactful. Even if I think they're giving me a positive uh, body language, it may just be to placate me or, oh, Gary, you're, you know, it's a good question. Oh, I like that. It's really thoughtful. So it's a lot like podcasting. I may say something and Alex, you're a nice guy. You might say, oh, Gary, that's a, a great thought. Meanwhile, you're thinking that was a terrible thought. How am I going to, I'm going to take that comment and wrap it into another question. Ugh, I don't want to go down that direction. So Gary, you need to step it up, buddy. Now, it's funny that you say that because recently, or just over time, like I've had clients and you're wondering like, hey, did this work or how's it going to work when they, you know, come back? Because I always start off a session asking them like, how was the week? You know, what did you accomplish? Did you, you know, do what we talked about and all this? And sometimes like during the session prior, you're not sure at all. And then they'll randomly come back and be like, oh, I did it exactly how we talked about it. And you're like, oh, great. So it did work exactly how we uh, thought it would. You never know what people are going to do sometimes, even if they tell you, like you said. So you mentioned as well, you know, people progressing the example you gave uh, with the client of one quality is like your ideal client. Is there certain like qualities that you like them to have? Are you looking to work with a specific person? You mentioned something earlier, let's say career transition. What would you say that you specialize in? Well, when you look at my background, 
people will hire me because of my background. It's like, oh, Gary, you look like me. You're in professional services. You were promoted up to partner. That's where I'm at. I'm in professional services. I'm a manager, but I want to be a partner. That gives clients a lot of comfort that, okay, you know my journey, so you're going to be a better coach for me. I don't want to say it's a fallacy, but I don't need to have uh, live the career that you want to live to be an effective coach for you. We know this as coaches. Our clients don't know that because they don't know how to connect. So what I look for in a client is somebody that really is invested in coaching and understands what coaching is and really wants to get better themselves. I don't care what industry they're in. It doesn't matter. But I would fall into people that are in professional services, in management consulting. They look at me and say, oh, so you know, Gary, my journey. And what I say is, I have no idea your journey. When you say you're struggling in an executive presentation to have more confidence, I don't know your background or history to say this, that, or the other thing. What I do say is, here's what I did to be become more confident prior to these sessions. That may or may not be you because a lot of times clients are looking for my advice or perspective on something. And I always caveat it to say, this is what worked for me. Now you have to balance that with what would work for you. But these are some things that I tried that happened to work. But I like clients when I reflect back that really come prepared, that are really interested in the experiments and trying them and just a high level of honesty and integrity with being authentic and open with me. And I'll say, I'll, you know, we'll talk about now to next. If you don't want to do it, don't do it. If I give you a book to read or look at and you're not into it, don't do it. Just don't do it for the sake of pleasing me. I'm only throwing things out because I think it might be helpful for you. If you don't want to do a sage letter, don't do a sage letter. That may not be your jam and that's fine. But as I listen to clients, I might think, huh, write a letter as if you were 80 years old back to yourself now and, you know, walk through your current age up to 80 and tell, tell us what you would think. That's a curl young thing. Yeah, that is um, pretty interesting. So thanks for sharing all of that. Now, you mentioned a few things there, and one of them was you like to work with people who really are invested. I look at that as I, I like to work with people like that too. I like to say they're willing to do whatever it takes because they're going to invest time, money, energy into everything and really go for the results. So with someone who's really wants to like make the investment and all of those things, what is the difference you see from someone who isn't, let's say, willing to do that? Is it a vast difference? What have you noticed over the years? They don't come in with too much. And we dig as coaches and we try to figure out, hey, what was your week like? This is what we talked about last time. They're distracted. And I try to call that out if they're looking at it, like is now still a good time for a coaching session. But you can you can tell if they're not bought in. And you know, I work with clients whose company's paying for the coaching. So it's not impacting them at all. So they're showing up thinking that they need to do it. Where I'm thinking and where I'm struggling or thinking about is if somebody really isn't invested, as a good coach, we we call out what we see and we leverage like Boy, it really feels like you're not preparing for the sessions. It feels like you're distracted during the sessions. Do you really want to do this? Is this something that's that's for you? And in that honesty and openness, because I believe as coaches, we need to model some of the things that we want out of our clients, where we want authenticity, we want honesty, and we want openness from them. So we have to show that ourselves. And if I go down a path with a client, I say, boy, it doesn't feel like you're really prepared or you really want to do this. They may They may break this barrier of like, you know, Gary, I feel that a lot in my career and everything. And it always pops up. And can we talk about it? I'll say, yeah. Where else do you see this? Where you're quote unquote going through the motions. And that reflection to them may be like, huh, I see this everywhere else. And that is maybe what we coach on. It's like, okay, well, let's, let's talk through that. Because now you've hit on something that they've noticed in themselves, but they may not have felt comfortable until I pointed it out to them and just say, boy, it doesn't feel like you're too vested in this. So Maybe we just shouldn't have any sessions anymore. Are you okay with that? And that may flick something inside of them to say, oh no, that's not the reaction. I am invested. And they may realize it's a problem for them or they need to work on it or they continue to see it in their lives. Yeah, and I think that's one of the biggest benefits of coaching is the coach having that ability or that knack or you know just their experience to point out certain things because it's amazing that we're carrying kind of these limiting beliefs for years or unconscious programs for years. And then as soon as someone points something out, we're like, wow, I could I could have thought of that years and years and years ago. Why didn't I think of that earlier? So thanks so much for 
uh, bringing that up. Just to kind of, you know, we're coming to an end here, I think. What is there anything else that you would like to add? Or if people are thinking about working with you, where's the best place to, you know, get in touch with you and all of that so everyone listening can, you know, find out for themselves? Oh, thanks for that. My website is my name, Gary Nowak, G A R Y N O W I K W W W dot. So you can go on there, check out everything. I try to be as open as I can. Uh, LinkedIn. I'm Gary P. Nowak. P is in Philip, which is, if I asked you what P stood for, Philip, no way doesn't come out in the first first three. So it's Gary P. Nowak on LinkedIn. I do a lot of work there. I'm posting a lot. I post all my podcasts on there. So you see me out there every week on LinkedIn posting something. So that's probably both the, the two two places to find me. Cool. So everyone, you've heard it. That's where you can find Gary. Uh, Gary, thanks so much for uh, coming on. And Wherever you are listening to this podcast, it would really be helpful to bring other people in if you left a review. And so everyone, thanks for listening, and I hope to see you on the next episode. Thanks, Alex. Great, great time.